Okay, welcome back everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm just trying to find the correct pen size that I want to use. Um, today we are going to be painting a Airstream trailer out in some setting. <laughs> Not quite sure yet, but um, I've got a reference pulled up on Google. Um, so just be warned if you're using references that you're not selling or um, like mainly trying to get monetary gain from it. I think using references from Google is okay as long as it's personal work. So just be careful with them um, and try to alter the photos enough that it doesn't look like your reference photo. So with that being said, we're gonna begin. I'm just gonna begin by sketching. I'm using Pentelic pens um, on Arches cold press paper. And this is a 0.3 pen from Pentelic. They sell them in packs of like five super nice pens. Um, but this has been my go-to for a while now. We're gonna divide the paper up mentally into threes. And I think we're gonna put the Airstream over on this third over here, maybe a little bit lower, and we're gonna have this nice scenic sky and stuff. So we're gonna do a little smaller Airstream, maybe right over here, um, sitting maybe on a cliff or something, we'll see. But we will start going with it. Um, as usual with most of my uh, drawings and paintings, we start off with the line portion, gives us a frame of reference, um, and just makes our wash portion easier. I'm sure you can do it other ways too, but if you're going to do the wash first, you got to have a pretty clear um, direction that your painting is going before you start doing the wash. Whereas with the drawing first, you can always kind of uh, start and build it along the way and then come back through and paint over stuff, which is always nice. So we're gonna do a little doorway. Um, let's see, something like that, looks nice. Got a little window. And the goal being is um, you can have neater lines if you want. I kind of like the more messy lines. It's really just up to what you want. Um, personally, I feel like it's better if you do a little bit looser looking lines, um, but that could just be me. It's really up to your personal preference. The more you want to experiment, the better and find your own style. Or if you want to copy mine, totally, totally fine with that. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with that. And oftentimes imitating work of others is super, super crucial in, in the learning process. So there is no shame in that at all. I don't know if Airstreams have two wheels, four wheels. We'll just do two wheels, because why the heck not? Something like that, we'll have little steps coming down. Yeah, this is gonna be a grand, grand uh, scene. We'll have a little grill over here too. Maybe some tables and chairs. Nice little campground area or something. Something like that, that's looking pretty nice. We'll come through and start shading. I'm trying to keep my line direction going similar ways. Um, so the more consistent you can keep your lines the better. You don't want to start doing like, so say I wanted to add details on this trailer. You'd want to make sense of the trailer. So say I want to add some lines. Let's zoom it in a little bit so you can actually see. Is that in focus? So say I want to add some detail lines on the top of this. I'd kind of picture the Airstreams like a little cylinder shape. So something like this. And we want our lines to kind of mirror that shape to give it the roundness. Oh, it's really hard to see down there, but so you can do some little cross hatchy looking lines, something like that. That can work. And we'll do some lines here. Just consistency in our lines is, is pretty important. That's looking good. And 
in. Maybe we'll put them on some, some hills, something like that. It's looking good. Maybe they're going to be overlooking this nice valley or something. Something like that. That'll be really nice. We're going to zoom back out so you guys can see the rest of that. Make sure that's in focus. I think that is cool. That's looking good. And we'll give them a little path up to that. And let's picture maybe they're off in, I'm from Utah, so maybe the Utah desert, maybe we'll do some of these like really iconic kind of like pillars off in the distance or something. Something like that. Like more plateau-y. That can work really well. Just overlooking this grand, um, desert scape and so those lines will be pretty small back there and we'll fade them in the distance obviously so I'm not going super super um, hard on those lines but I think that's looking pretty good maybe we could even add some like desert shrubs something like that just more jaggedy Jaggedy is a-okay. Could even do some more over here. I imagine the desert kind of has smaller trees. Something like that. That'll look really good. And there will be some dirt and stuff like that. Maybe a little bit of gravel along that way. Cool. And that's our basis for this wash. So let's start doing the wash portion right now. Very, very simple line work. Uh, simple is often better than more um, extreme line work. So, uh, and I suffer from going overboard sometimes too. So trying to tone it down, not always, you can come back later and add more in if you want, but we're using one brush. This is just a master's touch crappy one from Hobby Lobby. Um, and then we're using Windsor Newton uh, color palette, the small one. We're gonna start with that sky and let's do Maybe more desert sunset, so I need to kind of clean my paints off here because they're getting a little dirty. But to do that, you can always just dab off the paint that's been in on there. So I have some greens on my yellow, so I just dab that off, clean my brush off, and come back. We're going to clear a little spot in this palette right here and wipe that out. And let's go for it. And so with skies, they're a little bit more flowy. So using a wetter brush with some color on it can get some pretty good results. So pretty, pretty damn brush, I think is, uh, you get better results here. And you can use whatever brush you want, but most of these little paintings can be done with just a single brush, which is nice. Leaving some space for clouds in there, so kind of using like the flat end of this brush instead of the tip. Keeping my brush strokes going the same way, kind of like left to right. Consistency in brush strokes is also important. You don't want them to look too unintentional. It's kind of a fine balance of making it look um, unintentionally intentional. It's very, very odd. And we're going to bring that down into that mountainscape back there because this is kind of a hazier um, 
setting. So those are clear off in the distance. So there's going to be some natural haze to them. Yeah, that's looking nice, leaving some white spaces for that uh, cloud to come through. And then what we're going to do is actually start trying to build up some more reddish purple tones in there. So we'll take some red and some blue, make some purple, wet in our brush, keeping it pretty um, damp and just adding some reds in underneath those clouds, letting the paint work into that wet area of the paper so it kind of blends together. And it'll kind of just take on its own life, which is super, super fun. And just using the edge of my brush for those small strokes and kind of letting it do its own thing is good. We can come back and actually add some more contrast in. So I'm going to use less water this time and more color. Because those clouds, I want them to stand out just a tiny bit more. Now I'm going to add quite a bit more water to my brush and come back and kind of paint over that horizon line. Um, very little color on my brush right here. I'm just trying to get that um, hazy effect out in the distance. So working left to right. And then just keep adding water, not adding color, and you're just going to blend that and grad gradiate it downwards. Um, towards the bottom of your painting. And we can kind of break up that harsh line I've added. Maybe bring in some more yellows there. Just to make it look a little bit more sunsetty. And we can really start to build up the bottom of those clouds with yellows and building up that horizon line. Try not to bring that yellow too far into my mountains, but just around it. And maybe a little bit more red, a little bit more water, trying to dab off the excess as much as I can. And these colors will dry a little bit lighter than what you put them on. But try not to add too, too much chaos into the sky. Still leaving room for that white area. Uh, in between the clouds, for sure. Adding a little purple underneath all of these to give them some definition. Purple, shade them, give them more, um, more liveliness to them. That's the right word. And I'm actually really digging that. I think that's super nice. Okay, while that is drying, we're going to come up and work on our foreground or our subject area, I guess. So we're gonna mix some reds with some browns. Um, Utah has this iconic red rock, so maybe that's what our dirt will look like. So red with brown. I'm using a fairly dry brush. I'm just gonna start working into this dirt and you want your foreground to be way more contrasty than your background. Background should be pretty um, minimal as far as colors go, just to give it that depth. If you have it all the same contrast, your painting will look flat. And we can come back through and add in other stuff too, but for now, drier brush will give you more like rough detail, whereas a wetter brush will kind of just fade together. So a drier brush with more color will give you more texture to it. But I'm still keeping all of my um, brush strokes trying to go the same way. And while your paint is still wet, you can always come through and add water to your brush and kind of fill in some of those white areas if they weren't quite what you wanted. So I had too many little white areas. It was kind of making it look chaotic. So I'm coming back through and kind of just trying to fill those in with just more water on my brush. Still keeping some of that texture in there, which is nice. Yeah, that's looking good. And we can come back through and add some darker, more orange spots in that dirt. Variations in colors is really good too. 
really dry off your brush. We don't want it to start seeping and um, cauliflowering everywhere. But we also got to think, so our light's kind of coming from here. So this side on the ground will be more shaded. So what we can do is actually add some purple into that ground and start to kind of fill in the shadow from this uh, little campsite we've got set up and our trees. So keep paying attention to the direction of the light. They're gonna cast shadows more diagonal this way, keeping your brush stroke going the same way. I'm just using the very, very, very edge of my brush in very small doses to create that. Yeah, and you can add some of that into the ground. We'll actually bring some of that purple into our background as well. A little too much damp paper down there. So trying to minimize the effects of cauliflower happening. Cauliflower is the worst thing to deal with. Try not to be too specific as to like color in the lines or anything like that. Cool, now we'll touch our background, see how it's filling. If it feels dry enough, which higher quality papers will absorb quicker and better and lower quality papers will kind of just keep paper on the surface and won't absorb it. So that's the issue in my opinion with lower quality papers is they kind of just push the water around instead of allowing it to absorb excuse me and work in a little bit more so a little bit of purple and this is in the background so we want it to be pretty damp brush with not as much color but we're going to come in and just start kind of working in those mountains in the background purple with some reds that we can do Thinking of where that light's gonna hit it. So if our sun's more right here, you're gonna get a little bit of highlight here, a little bit of highlight here. Um, so trying to just think of that and where these mountains will actually cast their shadows. I'm gonna need a little bit more contrast back there. So I'm adding more color to my brush. A little bit more blue because it is getting kind of dusky in this scene. That one clear back there definitely needs some, maybe a little too much. So I'm gonna take some water and try to subdue it a little bit. Keeping in mind where my light source is coming from, that is key. Keeping my brush strokes the same way. And then even adding some little mountaintops clear back there. That's looking pretty good. And then what we can do is kind of bring back our red rock into the ground around this area. So let's take some more brown, brownish red, and we don't want it to be the same darkness as our foreground. Otherwise, like I said before, it'll look really flat and just kind of blending it in there. Leaving some space for that sun to poke through onto the ground and cast shadows and variants in your your light. Using a little bit damper brush to just work in the rest of the color that's on it without adding more color to the brush is good. Keeps your colors under control. So controlling how much paint is on your brush at any given time is important. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. We can even come back and define more of those shadows on those mountains with more color and less water on our brush if we wanted. Being very careful though, we don't wanna add too much like I was saying before, just enough to kind of separate these things from the background. 
give them a little bit more depth. Finding their shape a little bit more. in some of the shadows on the ground. And then coming back through onto our, some of that area and just doing some more work with some more color, give it some more variant. It's looking nice and we can even bring more browns in up here if we want and really give more contrast. So that's the beauty of painting like this is if you work in passes as opposed to trying to put all your color down once, at once, um, then you can kind of work in layers and build this stuff up way better. Still using that uh, basically side of my brush, not using the tip, more of like the flat side, um, and then working in like left to right movements. You don't want to start working up and down because that'll really add confusion to your piece. Um, unless the part of it you're painting calls for that, like maybe a little grass tufts, what we can do is actually take a very dry brush with our bristles kind of spread out and we can add in some little textures like going upwards. So see how that's more appropriate because it looks like desert grass. We can even do that with some green if we wanted to. And that's okay to kind of mix it up a little bit, but if you're trying to do like dirt spots, I would advise to keep your brush strokes the same. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush and kind of pulling upwards. And then we have this tree right here. So we're gonna, since it's foreground, we're going to actually use less water on our brush and more color and really just fill that in. And that greenery will just kind of help set this space in stone and just make it beautiful. And we can take other shades of green and kind of add it in there with some browns maybe. Definitely want more green than brown though. Yeah, maybe we'll bring some of that grass in. Drying off my brush so I can use the bristles better, more effectively. And in just little grass patches here and there. It's a desert, so you don't want too many, but some can help for sure. Isn't that looking cool? I love it. I think this path needs some more rocks, so it's looking good. And then we can add more shadow under our trailer, a little bit more purple. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so now we want our trailer, it's hyper reflective, it's made of metal. So I want to kind of mirror what the sky is doing. So we want to do a wash of yellow on this thing, but leaving some white spots for reflection and stuff. So um, a little bit of orange in there. And a little bit of purple, just mirroring what the sky is doing. Leaving that top portion right here, definitely um, more white because that's where your reflection is coming from. Uh, let's go a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more blue in there. And we can even add some blue to our background now to kind of mirror 
that as well as far as our shadows and stuff. And I still think we need a little bit more yellow. And maybe a little bit more. Definitely not green, so make sure you clear off your, your yellow. That was close, I almost had a green into it. Okay, and maybe just a little bit more work on those clouds. Cool. All right, so what we can do is we can use one of these. They're like a um, nice little cutter tool you can find on Amazon for like 10 bucks. I think it's called the slice tool. We can actually come through and kind of, these are great for pulling back some of our paint and adding in more highlights. You have to be super, super careful. You can also use a knife um, or like a screwdriver. You just have to be really careful, really, really careful. Um, I'm not using the blade part to pull down or anything. I'm using the very tip and kind of going against the sharpness of the blade, but it helps really to um, kind of come through and reverse a little bit of that and give just more texture into your, your work. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and let's see if we can show off more of what this is doing. But it's a great tool for watercolors, especially. So we can kind of come through my, path kind of disappeared here so we can come through and actually like add more highlights in. Being careful we don't want to cut all the way through. It's, good. it's nice because it can give just a little bit more texture back into that ground and stuff like that. Especially for our foreground where there's supposed to be like highlights and stuff like that. Background I want to do this on as much, especially not the sky where it's supposed to be smoother. And you're not trying to scratch all the way through the paper. You're just trying to scratch the surface back to the the white spot that was there before. Actually, I think that's looking really good. And then we're gonna bring our pen back and now we can add in just a little bit more detail. With your back lines, you wanna be careful. You don't want them to be too thick because they are in the background, but it is good to have variance in your lines. So you want some thick lines mixed with some thin lines. You wanna break up your lines just a little bit. So I'm not doing like completed full lines the entire time. And still keeping consistent lines where possible. So see how they're all going the same way? If I were to start switching them up, it'd look really weird. So trying to keep going that left to right motion, kind of following the shape of the mountain Pretty loose here, but not adding overly too much because that can just kind of dilute your painting. Same thing back here. These ones even lighter on those lines, even more broken up, just barely to give just a little bit of detail. 
We can even add like a little dry riverbed in here. Something like that. Just to give it some character. And you could work on and add some into the clouds if you want, but I would, for now, I'm just gonna kind of advise myself not to because I don't wanna overwork this piece. You will get to decide when it's done, ultimately. Um, and it's up to you to do whatever you want to do. So if you want to add more in the background, go for it. It's your piece. Yeah, it's looking really good. And then your front lines can definitely have more thick lines, um, but still variants. You don't want them to all be the same thickness. Part of what makes this um, style work so well is the variant in your line work. So not adding it everywhere, but enough to just kind of help separate, especially this path. This path kind of got lost because it's similar color. We can even add some into the grass. Pens can be great for kind of giving more shape to your shadows to give it more of a definite, yes, this is an intentional shadow. Sometimes shadows can start to look a little funky, especially things up here. Like you can start to really build in some rock shapes and stuff like that. And Utah's got some pretty unique rocks, so it's okay to be a little funky with them. And let's add some birds off in the distance. Kind of on that third line, because they're a point of interest. Always add birds. I end up adding birds quite often to my stuff, but not too many. And I think that's gonna be it. That's yeah, looking pretty cool. You can definitely go overboard, so try not to do too much work on it, but I would say that that is basically done. Let's pull off the, the tape. This is always my favorite part. You got to be careful when you're doing it because um, you can pull up your paper a little bit. But I think we're going to call that a done painting. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, please, please, please share this stuff with me on Instagram at Aaron Hurt or Aaron Paint Stuff. Um, I love, love, love to see your work, especially as you follow along with my stuff. It helps um, keep me motivated and inspires me and hopefully inspires you too. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next one.